Hello everyone, welcome back. So in our Selenium with Java series, today we are going to see a new version of the Selenium Java client that is 4.6. So now the 4.6 really brings a in-house uh, implementation of the web driver manager. So if you would have seen that uh, we had discussed a uh, one of the library that is called as uh, web driver manager, which helped us uh, to kind of manage the browser drivers so that you don't need to really specifically mention that what is the browser driver you need to install or maybe previously you need to install and then they set the path right now what selenium came up with an idea is that why not they can integrate the web driver manager as part of their selenium java binding okay now what i mean to say if i will go to my previous code base like if let me go to the form.xml now if you see that i had two dependencies before like the selenium java that is nothing but 4.4.0 let's say that i have tried this my last version last recent version and then i used to give the web driver manager as a separate dependency but uh, because this person who developed this particular web driver manager now he integrated this particular library along with the selenium java binding it means that now whatever the code implementation is there that has been now integrated as a selenium java binding now that is what we are going to see so we will see that what are the different changes that we need to do and how it is really impacting our existing framework okay it is very simple but worth to know about this change okay so now the first thing let's go to the documentation and uh, let's give the credit of this selenium uh, contributors and then they have really given a nice documentation and while i was referring there were a couple of points that i have taken from this long post which i wanted to give you guys a heads up now you can see that let's say you are not doing anything no web driver manager no setting up the driver manually so now you will be getting this particular exception that is called as the illegal state exception. The reason is that now the Chrome browser you are using like by saying driver equal to new Chrome driver, but you haven't specified where is that driver located so that it can talk to your Chrome browser. That is what actually this error is all about. Now it is telling that now the Selenium is coming with a battery. So you don't need to really fit a different battery into your Selenium. Okay, it's a nice concept, nice line actually they have included here. Okay, so now you can see that they pretty much they said that the Chrome, any browsers that you are taking, it's not just Chrome, it usually updates in every month actually that we have also seen. At every month, if you open your browser, it automatically updates that. And it is difficult for you to manually update that. Now to overcome that, we have used the, what you call the web driver manager, right? Now by the four six introduction they have integrated that with the selenium binding itself only okay and that is what they have given that they have inspired from the web driver manager and for different language binding they have different uh, libraries are there okay so now the selenium manager in detail like you can just go into this it's a selenium manager is a cli command they are using this command basically helps to grab the browser version whether you see depending on new chrome driver new firefox driver or new ms edge driver and depending on that this cli command will be now first grab your browser version and then it goes to the centralized repository of the browser drivers and finds the appropriate browser driver for you it keeps it downloads that into your local folder i will be showing that in a moment so it downloads that and also it even uh, what you call tags to your environmental variable uh, now when they append to this right path variable you don't need to really set this particular way actually if you remember the earlier days where we used to do that system dot set property now this gets automatically assigned uh, internally you don't really need to do anything okay so that is what they were talking about and now if you are more interested to do that you can go to this readme file and if you come back here, you can follow this readme file to install these packages by using Rust. Okay. And then you can even execute these commands. And if you feel this difficulty, 
don't worry about that i will show you a simple method that the selenium manager gives which you can get the browser version as well the browser driver version okay fine now enough of this documentation and theory part now let's get into the code base and then let's try to do the necessary changes okay if you would have watched our previous session of selenium 4 samples that i have captured everything in this particular selenium 4 sample github repository you can go into that and try to uh, do some exercise from this src folder actually here if you go that okay now the same i have actually cloned this to my local repository now what i'm going to do i'll make it as 4.6.0 that is the first thing that i'm going to do now here as the documentation says when you are using the 4.6.0 you really don't need to use this particular dependency fine fair enough so I will be just commenting this one and now when I comment it what will happen this particular framework or the code base will not really integrate the web driver manager as a separate dependency now I'm saving it and I will refresh or load my package dependencies so that the necessary downloads it will do that and I believe it is finished now just to make sure that the 4.6.0 really downloaded I always quickly go into this like in your package dependencies you can see external libraries and if you move down you can see that 4.6.0 really installed okay fine now I got the confirmation I'm sure couple of changes or couple of errors that it will be giving but no need to worry about that okay now see i have removed the webdriver io manager right so that is why it is throwing any a, a, a uh, what do you call an error that this package is not available i don't really need this one so i'm commenting and at the same time i'm going to even comment the import statement or you can feel free to delete this line itself only okay now when i run this particular code right now what is the expectation that the webdriver manager is removed now will the selenium manager will really give us the correct uh, what you call download the version and all those things now what i'm going to do that the webdriver manager always downloads the browser drivers into a specific location and i know that location so that is nothing but your user folder and i am into the mac so i will go to my user folder and then there is a hidden folder or a directory called cache so i'll go to this i'll go to this and you can see there is a under my you can see cache is there and then you can go to the selenium now there is something called as the selenium manager.json file this is what actually the webdriver manager uses and which is holding all the browser versions like i have used the chrome version before driver equal to new chrome driver so that's how actually it got the information now at this moment what i'm going to do i'll delete this one okay completely i will make it as empty now let's see if this selenium manager really does the magic or not okay so i will just go and run this particular code it's a simple test method don't worry about that and yes as usual it gives us couple of errors the reason is that if you see that most of my individual test cases whatever i have written i have used this web driver manager now give me some time i will be updating all these test cases to remove this web driver manager and then there is one more thing if you see that the cdp commands we were using the dev tools commands now this security now no longer uses the version 102 it uses the version 107 because this dev tools are nothing but very specific to the chrome version so i will be quickly changing these two things and then we will try to run this particular test method
Okay, now I hope all the errors that we have already removed or we have corrected them. So I'm closing all the tabs. I'm just opening for an example. And you can see that all the WebDriver Manager instances were removed. And now whatever the magic it will happen that is based on the Selenium Manager that is residing in our Selenium Java binding. Now let me run this test. And we have already, I have already shown this Cassie and Selenium and you can see that the Selenium manager dot JSON got created and also based on my, okay, let it run. It's a simple test. So I'm not really worrying about that. Now, if you see that uh, Chrome driver and I'm using Mac, so it just created based on the, what do you call operating system. And you can see this is the driver version, which it downloaded from the centralized repository. And that's how these things are working fine. Okay. So now uh, we have seen now it see it is not limited to my what you call driver of this what you call the Chrome driver only. Now what I can do I can just remove this and let me go into this and I will just say that driver equal to new Firefox driver. I can even do that. That's it. Now you just need to make sure that the Firefox browser is installed in your system or not. Now if I run this. I really don't need to worry about the browser version and everything. Now let's go to the Cassie and Selenium and see what happens there. And you can see the Firefox browser is running. I'm just keeping it in background and you can see that the Gecko driver also got installed here based on my browser version. It needed the 0.32. And now if you see this manager, Selenium manager, what do you call this uh, JSON file. Now this now holds another entry and that is nothing but your Chrome driver, okay, now Gecko driver and the specific version here for Firefox and for Chrome. Okay, so that is the magic actually it does. And even you can also de, uh, do the MS Edge driver and then it installs the re uh, respective browser driver actually based on that. Now that is the uh, benefit of that. So you really don't need to worry about that. You don't really need to specify the browser version that uh, you are using. It just uh, the only need or the mandatory thing is that you need to have the browser installed for which you are trying to run the test case. Okay. Now there are a couple of talks are going on that while I was digging down, what else different things we can really do with respect to this particular Selenium manager. Now there was a request from someone and then they were asking that, okay, now I have the Chrome version as 106, but I want to use the 105. Okay. Sometimes they say that, okay, for 106 version of the browser, the driver browser driver is having some issue, let's say. So, let's say that the Chrome is saying that, okay, now you can use it with the Chrome, uh, Chrome browser driver version 105. So is there any backward compatibility? So th there was different talks were going on that it is not an appropriate because this, this particular Selenium manager, what they have developed that is based on the recommended version. Actually, you can see that this statement, which I read now, what they are saying is that when your Chrome version is uh, 106, now the respective browser driver, we need to use it. If you really feel that the browser driver is having some issue, then you need to make sure that you need to downgrade to Chrome version 105 or something. So that is what they're telling, but more to come, you can keep track into these issues and you can get to know more about that. Okay. Now I just dig down into that and I was just thinking, okay, can we have an option to check it? What see some people can go inside this cache and then they can see that what is the browser version. Now Selenium manager gives you a out of box method where you can get the browser version, the browser driver version, which you are using. Let me show you that. So like if you go to this and let me just import one. Uh, what you call statement org dot open QA and then selenium and there is something called as a selenium uh, sorry manager actually and you can see that uh, it gives you this class okay now i can directly use this selenium manager and let's do one thing let me just go to this end and if you just call this particular method there is a get instance method actually and it's a singleton pattern it is using now it only exposes one particular method that is called as get driver path. Now it accepts couple of, uh, I mean one parameter. 
Now you need to understand what is that parameter. So I went inside the definition of that. And if you see here, it accepts any one of this string, either Gecko driver, Chrome driver, MSH, because these are the three drivers, three browsers Selenium supports at this moment. Let's say I want to understand what is the Chrome driver currently I am using it. Okay. Now let me just put it into a system.out.println statement. Okay. And it should be okay. Now it should give me the output actually. So now let's run this particular test and see the output. Okay, it's a quick test, so it just finished. And you can see this is the output actually it is giving. Now, which location on my system it is coming now if you are on the windows let's say and then the path that i have spoken it might not be the same way right you might have the c colon users or program files and all those folder structure and let's say you are finding hard to kind of see where are the browser drivers it is downloading so you can use this command okay this particular get driver path and then the chrome driver gecko driver msh driver and then you can get the path right away here and you can just go into this now why am i saying actually that you need to really know what is the internals of that see sometimes what happens when you run like lot of test cases that time different exceptions are coming some exceptions related to your driver setup or something let's say that you are running into a docker container now at that moment you don't know whether the browser driver really downloaded or not into the docker so at that moment you can just print this statement and you can come to know that okay the selenium manager really works okay so that is why i felt it is uh, an interesting uh, stuff to kind of know and that's what i've uh, given here but then more to come uh, as per the selenium community uh, the contributors they are telling that it is still in beta phase but then it does what it has to do that but then more to come like you can see that there are a lot of uh, uh, what you call next steps that they are doing you can go to the issue tracker from the selenium github repo or you can go to the community to kind of uh, post your questions and all those things so you can keep uh, following these particular blogs to understand more. If not, as and when they will be getting a new browser or new Selenium bindings, we'll try to discuss what are the other benefits they are adding it. But I think pretty much whatever this basic uh, functionality that what it has to do, it really does that actually. You don't really need to worry about about the what kind of browser version I'm using, what kind of browser driver I need to download and set it into my what you call um, environmental variables and everything. You just need to right away use the Selenium Java binding. You just say driver equal to new Chrome driver and you are done with that. Okay. So that's pretty much it. It was a quick introduction to this particular Selenium manager. If you have any questions, you can post it into the comment and we can discuss more. So stay tuned and do subscribe to this YouTube channel. We will be seeing some more interesting topics in our future sessions. Thank you for watching.